say this meeting is being recorded, so everybody knows it's being recorded for um, NCTV. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And um, I thought we'd go around and introduce ourselves. I'm Laura Luzel, a member of the Human Rights Commission. And I'm Karen Bellavance Grace, a member of the Commission. I'm Lisa Klein, the <coughs> City Council for <coughs> excuse me, Ward 7, and I'm um, the liaison from the City Council to the Human Rights Commission. I'm Brian Barnes, I'm a member of the Human Rights Commission. And I'm Joel Morris, a member of the Human Rights Commission. Christine Young, member of the Human Rights Commission. And um, I'm chairing because Michelle is out of the country. She asked me to chair, so bear with me. Um, so we start with public comment, if anybody from the public wants to speak. And I, do, I would like to say please keep it to three minutes. That would be great. Can you yes. come to the podium? Yes, and can you say, oh, well, yeah, that would be good. Okay. Yeah. Say your name, where you're from. I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, my name is Barbara Solo. I've been a resident of Florence for almost 10 years. And I'm here to speak in support of a resolution I understand you're taking up later, reaffirming Northampton's status as a sanctuary city. <clears throat> I applaud your taking up this issue, particularly in light of the election of Donald Trump, whose campaign rhetoric and supporters in Congress have called for such anti-democratic policies as registering all Muslims, deporting immigrants, and punishing sanctuary cities with the loss of federal funding. I also applaud your affirmation of Northampton's status as a sanctuary city, not only within the narrow confines of our response to the federal ICE administrative procedures, but more broadly, to encompass ways our city will be a refuge for all those targeted or harmed by the policies of this incoming administration. Our local colleges and faith institutions are already taking steps in these directions. I believe this commission could be a natural convener for expanding this important humanitarian work. I pledge to support you in those efforts in whatever way I can, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Barbara. I forgot to ask if somebody would be willing to do this. Mm -hmm. Can I get a volunteer to take minutes? I have no power. Otherwise, I would. I'm not very really good. <laughs> Okay. Well, if we have to end when you leave because then we'll have oh, quorum. Right. So you'll take this. Great. Thanks. Anybody else from the public want to speak? Okay. So um, I think we should um, <coughs> go out of order a little bit because we have a Mount Holyoke student who has to leave. So she's number four on the agenda. So why don't we just have her come right up? Thank you. <coughs> Hi, my name is Ellery Ballard, and I am indeed a Mount Holyoke student, and I have to leave because I have a 7 o'clock class, <laughs> but I'm here to propose, um, if possible, a community, a free community film screening um, in light of the refugee resettlement. I think it would be appropriate in order to inform the community about the people who are coming here and dis discourage treating the refugees as a monolith because they're coming from multiple backgrounds from Burundi, Congo, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. And I think there's already been media that's been put out painting all of them as Syrians for one thing, but I think it's important to recognize their individuality. And beyond that, to recognize that they are not, as some may characterize them, to be mooching off of funds um, and just to allow the community to empathize with them through documentaries that could outline and illustrate the difficulties that they have, not only with US policy and getting admitted, but also with extreme violence that they experience in their home countries. I have compiled um, a list of documentaries that I think would be poignant and appropriate, specific to the people who are coming here. Um, and also, so a few of them are in relation to refugee resettlements that have gone on not very far from here as well. Um, I would like to propose that at least one of the films is shown, but I think it could be all the more compelling and more accessible if it were a series, um, again, to so that we can talk about the numerous kinds of refugees. Um, and also, if possible, to have a component of Q&A um, and discussion after the films so that people have, who are in attendance have the opportunity to process their emotions. And hopefully that person running a guided discussion or Q&A has 
direct um, experience with resettlement um, or is a refugee himself. So what does it mean for the Human Rights Commission to co-host? What, what are you looking for from us? Just a space um, that people can congregate, um, something that can be um, yeah, publicly attended and also maybe flyered about or just yeah. You mean you want us to find the space? Yeah, or if you, yeah, if you okay. have a space um, that could be used for something like that, maybe you know something with a TV or um, projection uh -huh. capabilities. And do you have a date in mind? I don't, um, but I think so. The the families will be coming. And I, I don't know how much how familiar you are, but uh, I figured. Okay, so you know that it's incremental. This meeting and did a presentation, and folks awesome. have been very engaged, so they're pretty knowledgeable. Great. So you know that it's it's going to be incremental. But I think um, before uh, refugees are are here in any significant number, I think it would be appropriate um, to screen something like that, um, so that it's uh, preventative potentially mm -hmm. of any mm -hmm. uh, backlash emotions. Any questions? Fully support the idea of doing public education. It's one of the things that <coughs> the Human Rights Commission, we see ourselves as being uh, a, a body that does do public education. So it's uh, completely appropriate to ask us to co-sponsor uh, this with you. I, however, would want an opportunity to preview films before I co-sponsor them. Yeah, and um, I, I can send you the list with the terms. Um, and I don't know that we're we don't exactly have a space that's ours. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't our space. It's, we borrow it. Okay. But there are, I mean, I, I know of spaces in the city that are very inexpensive. So. Well, if the Human Rights Commission were to sponsor, we can use a city space. And what comes to mind um, as the best place, just because they're also tech prepared, is the um, senior center. That's what I was going to say. So, and that wouldn't be with a charge because it is a city space. Oh, okay. It's a city commission. Um, but I also just want to give a tiny bit of background. I've um, worked with Ellery on a few things related to the refugee project already. and. Um, you didn't mention that you're part of this class, an anthropology class that has a praxis element that has been engaged with the Refugee Project with Catholic Charities, with the steering committee. So Ellery's pretty um, savvy about these things and I think we can probably, I mean, I agree we should look at the films or at least the trailers, but I think that um, her recommendation goes a long way. Um, and. I just wanted to ask just kind of logistically, so if we were to arrange the space, and we, it would be, have to be listed as a public meeting because if the Human Rights Commission is there, we have to, for open meeting laws, we have to, but how much responsibility would you or your class take to publicize it, to help with you know, any other logistics that are gonna come up? So I am near positive that the Valley Advocate would publicize um, this. I would also, be happy to take on the role of flyering around town. Um, uh, beyond that, I think, so the advocate, I'm already speaking with reporters to do um, a series about resettlement. So I'm at the end of that article, I'm sure it would be appropriate to kind of plug any future uh, screening. I, I have a question. Since the Catholic Charities has in fact hosted over 16, probably between 16 and 20 house parties mm -hmm. uh, talking about the refugee project. Uh, I'm not sure, are you trying to overlap with those people? Are you trying to get a whole, whole new audience? I mean, I think yeah. a, a new audience would be appropriate because they are already pretty imbued with the uh, positivity <laughs> about uh, the resettlement. So I think just opening up public discourse. I've also interviewed people on the street and they're from that poll, there are not that many people who know about it. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm trying to figure out is like, how much work you would want from us. In other words, are you just asking us to say yes, we'll co-sponsor it and you'll do all the work? Or are you wanting us to do some work too? Because then we need to figure out how that's going to be done. Because we only meet once a month and we're not meeting in December. Okay. So it might need a subcommittee or something. Uh, sure. That would, that would be right. What you said, we don't, we don't have a budget. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, we, we don't have the funds to like 
put together flyers or things like that. I can handle flyers. Um, um, the, the other thing is, is as well, as you obviously well know, this is these uh, refugees will be coming in a long time. So, um, you know, I don't think anything could probably happen until after the year for sure. Mm -hmm. um, probably mid, you know, mid January at the earliest, I would think, depending on if we got the space and we got the material out there. But um, going with the assumption that after, I, I would think our next step would be for the members to review the, the films. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and if we still feel like these are are valuable, which I have no doubt, but I think it's, it's you know, then we could come back and say, yes, we would, you know, work with you to possibly put together some sort of a, a, a host or something similar to what we did with the with the refugee with hosting the open house. Mm -hmm. Right, in terms of timing, I think that we probably, by the end of tonight, we'll know when our January meeting is and that we could we could help reach a decision at our January meeting and then set a date for between the January meeting and the, and the February meeting to, to screen it. So. And as far as work goes, going into this, I think the only the components that are really necessary are figuring out a space. And yeah. it sounds like the senior center is somewhere that wouldn't cost anyone money, but it maybe wouldn't cost money because of your connection to the space. So finding that space, um, coordinating um, if this is to be a component, a, a host to, to guide discussion at the end, mm -hmm. um, which I don't know if I mean, you all are all involved in that and might, so people might come to mind. I'm happy to, to try to network and organize someone. There's Vasily Asino, who's a Syrian refugee who's currently a graduate student at UMass, mm -hmm. who might be uh, very appropriate. Um, and then Flyer, and I think that's, that's really it. And any access to um, publications that you all have. So does the timing of getting the film probably started, series started in February sound right to you? I think that sounds like I, I think it would have to be seen as how our next meeting is going to be the 25th of January. Right. That's so. Also, I mean, a, it, no, I mean, it could be that if, it, if, it, if we want it to be sooner, we could sit, we could vote on it and then have a subcommittee commission to work with it. Right. Uh -huh. So but there's also the uh, Facebook page for the Refugee Project, mm -hmm. which the name escapes me at the moment. That's an ideal place to advertise. Absolutely. I think um, it'd also be useful. One of the pieces that I think we should be involved in is kind of proactive outreach, and that would be contacting all the faith communities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just really doing some brainstorming about how to pull people into this. And, and I think also a little bit, we should talk more about kind of the framing of it and how we're putting it out there and what we hope to achieve and um, just how to, how to talk to people about why it's important to do this. So I, I think it's, I mean, it is simple, I think, to do a movie, but I think if we want to do it really well, we should put a little bit of time and maybe, like you say, Lori, um, do a, a subcommittee or something that would kind of organize all those elements. <coughs> And I also have, as I've, my class and I have attended many meetings and to, to, that deal with um, a kind of semantic approach to this project and how it's um, presented to communities and we've kind of teased out um, some of the things that have been more problematic. So I would be happy to share that information with you as well. So does everybody feel like it's okay to not to view the trailer? Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. Okay, so you'll get us the trailer too? Yeah, I actually I sent them in an email to you if you don't oh. mind forwarding that or I sent it. Should I send it to you, Lord? I if you did I didn't know it. Right. Well I'll, I'll forward it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just that that Google Docs attachment. Do you have any budget? Like could the Weissman Center at Mount Holyoke um, provide some money for like refreshments or mm -hmm. whatever? Yeah, I I've never worked with them before, but it, I'm happy to ask. I've discovered you can get a lot of things for free if you ask, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of why I do that, so. <laughs> yes, I can also talk to Alan Bloomgarden, who runs the Weissman Center. If, I mean, I know oh. you can do it too, but. I, of course. I mean, Alan is deeply involved in this. Yeah. I forgot that he was attached to that, yeah. but that makes But they sense. kind of have some discretionary money that I bet they could. Okay. Call 
he lives in Northampton. Yeah. He's been involved with the project. For what it's worth, the Amnesty International um, student organization, AMS, often hosts um, film screenings. Mm -hmm. So that could also potentially be a group that we could touch base with. Do you have connections to them? Yeah, I'm a part of the, cool. that RSO. So. I'm assuming we would want this in Northampton, though, not at UMass. Yeah. If not at both, I mean, I think the more yeah. um, spread of information, the better. Well, I think it, it first has to be seen as how we're in the resolution in Northampton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right. Yeah, but I, I think this sounds great. I, I, I look forward to seeing the trailer. Right. Yeah, I think I, I looked through quite a few and picked out one, two, three, five of them that I thought were particularly appropriate. And also, there's a lot of um, series that have, like, here's five episodes of this, and which seem more like a home viewing experience. So I picked out ones that were good for public screenings that were relevant to the R population coming in and some other things. So I think you feel fun. All right, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you um, very much. Yeah. So do you feel like we could vote on this now? Um, does anybody want to make a motion? What are we moving to? To, to review we'll those? To, huh? to co-host it based on our, I mean, first of all, we, we want to see them. I'm not doubting anything, but. I guess it would be that we co-host in concept, in theory, if you like the trailers. And also, if you want to establish something, yeah, establish I'll move to that. What she said. <laughs> sure. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Okay. So yeah. Um, anybody want to be on a subcommittee? I'd be happy to. Yeah, I'll. I'll. I'll do. Let me give you my card. Okay. Thank you. Much appreciated. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, because this is my first time chairing this meeting, if I do something wrong, please tell me. <laughs> I might. So I was going to propose, we have to end promptly at 6.30, I think, um, and we have kind of a long agenda. So I would like to propose that we take up the, um, the resolution next, because I think it's important. So is that all right with everybody? Mm -hmm. And then you can go in order. So um, um, let me just say how this came about. Actually, Barbara Solo um, reached out to me and suggested that the Human Rights Commission renew its support and of being sanctuary city. And I emailed Natalia. We thought it was a good idea. So I said I would draft this resolution and bring it to the commission and see how we all feel about it. So that's how it came about. That's why it's on the agenda. Would somebody be willing to read it out loud? I'd be happy to. Yeah. I don't need to stand up, do I? <laughs> Human Rights Commission resolution supporting Northampton's recommitment to sanctuary city status and the values of a democratic nation. Whereas, in 2014, Mayor David E. Narkowitz adopted an executive order declaring Northampton a sanctuary city insofar as its police force would not honor and enforce any detainer request from U.S. Immigration and Customs Official Enforcement that is non-criminal and also committed to city policies and procedures that ensure the highest level of public safety while building trust between law enforcement and community residents and visitors and that it will be the continuing policy of the city of Northampton to assure equal, just, and fair treatment of all persons who live in and visit the city. And whereas on November 20th, 2014, the city council unanimously endorsed the mayor's executive order with a resolution stating that the city has been and continues to be enriched by the contributions of community members who have traveled from all points of the globe to make their homes here and whereas the city council on November 17th endorsed a resolution declaring its commitment to protecting this community's residents from racist, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, 
anti-immigrant and anti-refugee sentiment and acts and all other targeting of residents based on their identities or perceived identities and <clears throat> whereas the Northampton Human Rights Commission has thrown wholehearted support behind the city's commitment to resettle refugees to a program of the Catholic Charities and whereas the Northampton Human Rights Commission condemns bigotry in all its forms and supports civil liberties of people without regard to race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, national origin, gender identity, disability, citizenship, or immigration status, and whereas the president-elect, while, while campaigning, repeatedly espoused beliefs and support of policies that would demean, target, discriminate against, and endanger people from all those groups and more. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission stands solidly behind the mayor in his efforts to maintain the city's status as a sanctuary city, even if it means losing federal funding, and be it further resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission fully agrees with the City Council's statement that our city has been and continues to be enriched by the contributions of community members who have traveled from all points of the globe to make their homes here, and be it further resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission articulates its commitment to welcoming any residents who feel targeted or unsafe based, upon, based on their identities or perceived identities to share their experiences with the Commission so it may offer support and guidance of where to get help. And be it further resolved that the Northampton Human Rights Commission is guided in its work by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted in 1948 by the United Nations and now hereby recommits to being a city body dedicated to education about the values and ideals espoused by that document. And be it further resolved that the that the Northampton Human Rights Commission stands behind the City Council's resolution that rejects authoritarianism and white supremacy and redoubles its commitments to the values of freedom, justice, and equality that bind us as a community and to, the protecting, and to protecting those whose security and well-being may be threatened in the current political and social climate. Thank you for reading that. <coughs> I need water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's fantastic. I, I, I like every part of it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, a couple, I think it's great. And thank you very much. I didn't realize that the um, impetus came from a um, member of the community. So thank you so much. Um, just a couple of nitpicky things. Um, and then one thing that's a little more substantive. Um, and the second, whereas um, I just think uh, endorse the mayor's executive order. There should be a capital M there. Oh, okay. Um, and then in the fifth, whereas um, all of these groups, national origin, gender identity, disability, um, we actually had a discussion in council about this and people feel really strongly and it makes a lot of sense to me that we are not focusing on one's disability but on ability, so it should just say ability as opposed to disability. Okay. Does that make sense? Or abilities. Um, ability is kind of a, a concept though I think here, so I think singular makes sense. Um, and then just technically the last whereas is the one right below it. You don't and that because you're done with the whereas is, so there should be a period after more. Okay. Because the, the resolves, the resolutions oh, come, yeah. are kind of separate. Okay. Um, the same thing, the very last at the last be it further resolved on, not on the, the document, but on the first page. Um, with the commission, the com that should be a capital C because you're speaking um, specific to the Human Rights Commission. And then- Very last line. All oh, right, okay. And then the only other thing is, um, I think it's good practice at the, end, at, at the end of a resolution to talk about its dissemination because you want to make sure that it's actually going places. And, and it's, it's standard practice to include in a resolution where it will be disseminated to, who you're trying to influence. So I would suggest that it say something like, be it further resolved that the chair of the commission will ensure that the resolution is delivered to the Northampton City Council, the mayor, um, 
And then if you want to go beyond that and say, you know, Senate President Stan Rosenberg, I mean, that's, it, I think that's the discussion that the commission should have, but it's good practice to make sure that we're actually getting this out there and making it clear. Maybe you should have like a, a small stack of copies to uh, put in the library so that, you know, for the public, they have a little placard, say, for the public, please read, you know, as for the distribution list on this, though, do you want to list everywhere it should go? I, I'm afraid we'll be miss, we'll, we'll be omitting somebody. In other words, if you put the list of everybody on there, are you are you saying that it's not going to go to anybody other than this? No. Okay. No. I just you know I don't want somebody to look at it and go, well, how come you're not sending it to? Yeah. But, but I think your point well, was that in order for it to pack some punch, you better deliver it. Exactly. To the mayor's office or. or or the city council. Yeah. I think well, for those at minimum, okay. the mayor yeah. and the city council. Um, um, what, what if you can grammar, is well-being not a compound word in the last sentence or the last paragraph? The last um, line there? Yeah. Well, I just have to say that I took that from the city council's thing. So I just took it. So it I don't know what to say. I'm asking you as an editor. I, 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 yeah. I, I look things up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll look it up. I think I wrote that originally, and um, working in the field of public health, we've always done well-being as one word, so. <laughs> Seems how it's in quotes, you can't change it anyway. Well, that's true. Yeah. Um, so, I, any, uh, any comments about the sentiment? Any, we all like it, basically. Oh, so, yes. I, I, I'm out of curiosity, since I'm uh, resolving to uh, terminate potentially terminate federal funding to my city? Do we know what that amounts to? Well, it's not that much. I read it, I read it in the but it's not that much. The mayor said it. He said it's not that much. <laughs> it's like CBGB money and I don't know what else. But it's a surprisingly not, a, a, I mean, most of our money comes from the state. So it's not insignificant, though. For a little bit, but you got to take a stand. Yes. So. Well, I, I, I'm all for taking a stand, but people, for example, if they're not getting their CD, CDG, DB money, will, will impact people's housing in this community, because I know that that's, that's a lot of where, where it often goes, is the homeless population often benefits from it. So I was curious what the amount of federal funding is at, is at risk here. So. I, think he, I think what I read was it's 5% of our budget. But, um, Which is not insignificant, but... I mean, to me, it's, I agree. We should know what it is, but I don't think it's going to change our result. I mean, my feeling about it is that you have to put your money where your mouth is. Right. Um, I, I think that we should uh, add to this that we will put it on the Human Rights Commission's um, city council, I mean, uh, city page, right? We can put that there in our on our page and give it to the mayor, the city council. Um, I like your idea, the Senate president. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Catholic Charities, maybe? So they know? Anybody? Is that appropriate? Wouldn't that violate the separation of church and state sort of thing? No, uh, no. Social okay. service organization, but usually, um, just in terms of past practice, it's really just government, not yeah, okay. official. The reason why I thought of them is because part of the reason why I want to do this is because of that project and what's happening. And I feel like we have to we have to work, be more vigilant, work harder to make sure the people we bring here well, are safe. Here. That goes back to my point. In, in other words, I don't, I don't. I just wanted to know that whatever the distribution, it doesn't mean we can't give it to them. Yeah, I guess that's true. Exactly. You but know. but in terms of what typically happens with these, is you you say where you're going to distribute it in the city government. Right. So city, state, or federal. City, state, or federal. So, um, well, does anybody think we should send it to anybody in the federal government? <laughs> I think that it wouldn't be imprudent for us to send it to our senators and state rep for our district. Okay. There, the um, resolution that we just passed in city council has um, wording, and I can send it to you, that uh, includes everybody that we sent it to that is our <coughs> federal state 
city. Okay. Okay. You just wholesale lift it and plunk it down. So if everybody agrees with that, then then given those the changes that Elisa just said and the the wording that she's going to send me, do we want to vote on this? Um, okay. Can I? Can I? I want to offer another comment. I'm kind of stuck thinking um, about what Chris has brought up, which I think is really important because we're talking about protecting some of our some of our most vulnerable citizens, but the CDBG funds actually go to uh, it's a handful six or seven organizations all of whom are serving our most um, vulnerable populations. It goes to the Center for New America. I mean, it's every year it's different. We do a whole committee and, and decisions are made, but it has gone to Center for New Americans, uh, Casa Latina, um, housing organizations, um, veteran support organizations. And um, yes, it's, you know, maybe it's 5% of the budget. I don't remember the numbers, but it's, it's not, it's not insignificant when you think about those organizations getting you know, 20% of their budget maybe from the CDBG funds. So at the same time that we're, we're stating that we want to protect people, there is a way in which we potentially are putting them at risk and losing those funds. So that said, what I would suggest um, the commission consider is adding another um, resolve or whereas or something that says acknowledging that loss of these funds could, um, I, I'm just really talking off the top of my head here, but acknowledging that the loss of funds could endanger or put at risk already vulnerable populations, um, we encourage finding alternate sources in the, in the city's budget to ensure that those monies are allocated or something. Mm -hmm. like and in that. addition to that, bring pressure on the so-called Trump administration to not uh, remove our funds. You know, that that's also would be something that we, we should be advocating for anyway, not that we should just lay back and, and uh, let this happen so without Trump's aware statement. Aware right, right here to a resolution that we will um, proactively advocate. And um, in that list that it includes the president-elect, it includes our yeah, president-elect. Okay. President so we'll be sending this to them, but um, yeah, that the commission resolves somehow to. Okay, I can add those. Does that, do you think that given these changes, I should bring it back to the next meeting or I should just do it and then we? Well, I mean, given that the next meeting is not going to be until late right. January, I think we need to do it sooner rather okay. than later. So I I got what what those two things are. I can easily do all of this. So if you guys are okay with that, I think you had a comment. Yeah, the, the thing that keeps sticking with me is the verbiage of putting authoritarianism and white supremacy. Um, the, the notion of rejecting white supremacy specifically and not, um, and not racism or systemic racism, it, from a rhetoric standpoint, when I read that, it delegitimizes the, the resolution. I mean, that is, that is a buzzword. That's, that's not conceptually something to reject. It's a buzzword that includes a lot of sentiments. I mean, would we similarly reject a supremacy that wasn't based on, on race, I guess is my point. Um, well, this is, a resol this is a resolve that is simply kind of standing behind something the city council did recently. Mm -hmm. So we could take that part out and just have it be the second, the part that's in quotes. For I mean, me, the, the part that's sticking is, the, is specifically white supremacy because if people who could be potentially harmfully impacted are, are pass as white, um, they're still, they will still be harmfully affected. I mean, people from Central America can often pass for white depending on their heritage. Was the city council's resolution specifically say rejects authoritarianism and white supremacy? Yes. I mean, okay. I think that I mean, then, then all we're saying is we, we're standing behind the city council's resolution. Okay. Right, but if, if, if I mean, Brian- I, I, agree, if, I agree with what you're saying, but we're not saying it. 
But, but we don't have to have it in our resolution. I chose some things from what they did. But if we don't want that part, we could just say stand behind the city's council resolution Period. that redoubles its commitment to the values of freedom, justice, equality. No. No, I think you need it all. I mean, that's just my thought. I. Why do you think? Well, because it just says redoubles its commitments to the values of freedom. You're, you're, you're. I mean, it makes sense without it. You know, yeah, I, everybody. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I'm not. I'm not I, I mean, I don't care. But I mean, I'm comfortable either way. But I don't have. I, I understand exactly what you were saying. If we were saying that, mm -hmm. but we're not saying that. The city council is saying that. Don't forget too. There's a whereas in here that condemns bigotry in all its forms, and it goes through a whole list, including race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. So it's somewhere else in the resolution where it really, um, you know, hits those particular kinds of um, bigotries. So I can just tell you why I pulled it out of what the city council did is because of um, the things the president-elect said when he was campaigning and the people he's associating with. So that's why I felt it was important to be in that. I understand. But I mean, I don't mind if we take it out. I, I, I think the language makes it really clear that we're standing behind the city council's resolution, so I'm comfortable with it as it is. Can you live with it? Um, I mean, I can live with it. <laughs> I don't necessarily have to agree. That's what. That's that's why voting yes, happens. You do. <laughs> so. <laughs> A resolution can, can exist without me necessarily agreeing to one point. Okay, so, all right. Any other comments? Do we want to vote on it? I would, I would move that we accept this resolution with the, fixes. With, with the, the changes discussed. Okay. I second that. All those in favor? All right. <coughs> Sorry, oh, I would like to abstain. But would you? Would you? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Um, so we have minutes from August and September. Who here was at our August and September meeting? Um, I, think it's right here, right? I was at September. Now. Thank so, you. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for coming. I can see from the minutes that I was here. Oh yeah. <laughs> and and yeah, right. So so can I? Can we just up, up, adopt these minutes? Yeah. Ready to make a motion to adopt the minutes? I make a motion that we adopt the minutes from August and September. Sure. Okay. All those in favor? That's done. I think that's the common one just for, for the future with minutes. Um, I know that I'm not an official member. I'm the liaison um, to the group, but if um, whoever takes notes could include me in the presence, I think it's useful because I will have institutional memory and oh, whatever. Okay. I just noted that uh, noticed that in the past two minutes I wasn't included as present, although I was. So do you want me to add you to these? That'd be great okay. if you could. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I don't if, if it's too much trouble, I would worry about it. I suppose for the purposes of minutes, it should be first and last names too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, I, so I think Carla has these, so I'll get her to fix them in. Um, so I guess we are being asked to co-sponsor a, um, this is number five, we're being asked to co-sponsor the presentation of a film, Lives Worth Living, Great Fight for Disability Rights. This sort of happened um, in between meetings that um, I think uh, that um, Marion Labarge asked, I think Ms. Talia, if we would co-sponsor it, and she said yes, or, so we're voting on this now. I received a flyer in the mail. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Indicated that it had already done this. This is kind of an after the fact discussion. <laughs> I received a flyer in the mail too. Um, I don't think it involves anything except our name. Um, so, do we want to sponsor it? We, we already are. So, can we can we vote to sponsor? We better say yes. 
<laughs> yeah. So you want to make a motion? Yeah, I move that we, that we sponsor the uh, life worth living. Well, all those, yeah. second, anyone want to second? Second. All those in favor? And um, I think in the future, this should happen. We should do this before we do. We are sponsoring something, but. Um, okay, um, Alyssa, you're next. Um, I think that we need to table the Black Lives Matter discussion yet again, which upsets me, but I know that we have a short amount of time, but it's extremely dense. Um, I did. Um, pull out everything that I thought we could discuss and I kind of have a little bit of but you should have that. It says movement for Black Lives platform at the top. Um, and I have a way of, I think, kind of shortening the discussion, but I just don't think we're going to have time today. And if we're not going to talk about it, you should probably hand those back to me so that I make sure that I bring them when we do reconvene, unless you all feel really committed to bringing really them back in January. I'd rather have the time to really discuss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we really need to discuss it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. but I do want to be sure that we get to um, do business because I think there's something that we have to have on our agenda for January about the configuration and rules of this. Uh, and I was approached by someone that I have to bring up some new business to. So. Okay. So we're going to table this. Can I ask a question? Um, does the commission feel? Do you feel, Lisa, that it is? It would be worthwhile for us to schedule a separate meeting for this before the 25th of January. Um, if people feel like they're willing to, I think it would be awesome because we've put this off literally for I think six months now, and the time is now. You know, I think that's a really good idea because why is it that we're not meeting in December? Why don't we just meet in December? I think generally the thought I don't. I don't remember, but obviously you couldn't be in the fourth week, you know. No, but we could make another meeting time. That's a great idea. Anybody want to make a meeting time to talk about it? Special meeting? Then we wouldn't be restricted to this space and that sort of thing. We could meet elsewhere or nothing matters. You know what? I still have it on my agenda, on my calendar, that we're supposed to meet the 28th of December. I do not have that. I think Natalia kind of would give a letter in December that one. Oh. Well, I know at the last meeting she said we don't meet in December. Oh, she did? Oh, yeah. I missed that. Okay. But, um... The 28th is... Yeah. The well, last Wednesday of the month. That's why I, I probably just plugged it all in on the last Wednesdays of the month. That's probably why it's in there. Can everybody here make it on the 28th? I'm not sure yet. Okay. Um, what about the 21st? I can certainly do the 21st. All right, well, Chris? So let's meet the 21st. Yeah, I don't think I can. I don't know yet, but I, I may not be able to, but I can't tell yet. <laughs> so go ahead. Like I I'd like to be there. But. Would we need a quorum? Uh, yes, it would still be. And we have to make sure we can get a room. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Providing we can get a room and have a quorum, we want to meet on the 21st? Sure. sure. I think the 28th is a little iffy because sometimes people are traveling the week between Christmas and New Year's, so I think the 21st probably makes more sense. Yes. All right, so that's good. Um, we also have this draft of a column that Natalia wrote, and did you all have time to read it? Um, call, call, yeah. Well, letter to the editors, which talked about. Oh, yeah, letter to the editors. Um, we have, anybody have any feedback, or um, do we want to tell her to send it? Do we want to make suggestions? I, I agree with the sentiments that are um, that are in the letter, but I would like to um, see if we could make some suggestions about uh, word choice and punctuation and things like that. Okay. I also have a question about whether it's intended to be a letter to the editor or an op-ed column. Yeah. I think it's intended to be a guest column. Okay, oh, okay that's different. Yeah. I mean, 
Because they tend to just turn long letters to the editor and to guest columns. So that's what she's doing. But do, if we want it to be a letter to the editor, then we can keep it to three words. Mm -hmm. To me, it doesn't matter. I, it's angry. <laughs> oh, okay, so you have some well, tone issues. Um, I just think we need to talk about it a little bit. I, I don't. I completely agree with what it's saying. I have no problem at all. But I just think a little bit of it is a little bit, um, I, you know, in the very last sentence in the first bit. You know, millions of people are scarred, and for good reason. That's a, you know, that that's a strong statement. I don't necessarily agree, but it's also, to me, a. A statement where people pick out and say, "Who? Tell me where. What are the, you know, what are the facts?" Um, little little things like that. that uh, so some generalizations and some maybe. Yeah, um, when you use things like that, I just, you know, it 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 takes away from the whole point of the thing. I think people will pinpoint on that. That uh, you know. And. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're talking about the part about the part about Germany being scarred by the Holocaust. No, well, that was my other question. It says. Um, it's in the same paragraph. No, it's in the no, second in the week since the election, the very last uh -huh. the first page. Um, we're in a troubling time, and above that, when the leader of another country. Okay, who's that? Uh, you that's, know. That's yeah. It's, it's Angela Merkel. That's well then, you know, so that I think we need to say that, you know, that's... Yeah. Um, I think we have to consider whether we have the time tonight to actually put into this, right. like, wordsmith it. And I think conceptually there's some issues with it too. It's not just wordsmithing. And, you know, I, I agree with everybody else that I, I basically agree with its tenets, but it, it needs, I think, a lot of work for it to come from a, a city body. Okay. So and I also think it's only fair that Natalia wrote it, she should be here. Okay, so we want to table this yeah. then until mm -hmm. December. Okay. Uh, that seems like a good idea. So then we have new business, and you wanted to bring some. Yeah, I just had some. Very, very briefly, I was approached by um, Megan Clute, who's a, a lawyer with uh, Curran and Berger. We're on another board together, and she asked me if I would uh, bring up the idea that perhaps the uh, Human Rights Commission would, someone could speak at something next Wednesday in the Oak Room at Smith, where there's a post-election discussion on immigrants and our community focusing on how policy and legal changes under the new administration could affect our immigrant communities. Long story short, it's about um, uh, someone from the Human Rights Commission to appear to speak about 10 minutes about the status of the refugee resettlement plan and explain the details, complain over the overwhelming support we received. Now, I re talked to her not, and I surprised that I'm not speaking on the Human Rights Commission. However, I just thought, I showed her the, or I sent her the website of what our job, and I explained her, we don't oversee the immigration thing. Um, I don't know that we would be the right people to talk about how it's going and what's well, happening Elisa with would. it. I think Elisa would if you want to. Um, I um, think anyone from the steering committee could do it. Um, if, it if she wants someone from the Human Rights Commission? Well, she knows me and she knows I'm the Human yeah. Rights and she, was, and she saw that we hosted that. And I just had explained to her that, you know, I, I also had told her that perhaps someone from Catholic Charities would yeah. be would be appropriate. But I said I'd certainly bring it up to everybody, but I, I mean, I just didn't think that someone from the Human Rights Commission would we're be not, the best person. We're not person. like the most direct source. Exactly. So, yeah, better to have you at least. I mean, this. I'll be more than happy to forward this to you, and you could talk to her. Yeah. I don't know if you know Megan or not. Like a week from today? Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, I think I actually, I personally can't, but I can talk to the um, folks on the steering committee and see if anyone can um, I can forward her her note to me that gives the whole details of it, and and you can talk to her. But I I 
And I would have to get to go ahead from Catholic Charities too. I mean, I can talk about it from the city perspective, I suppose, but I we kind of, the steering committee members have an agreement with Catholic Charities that if we're doing kind of public speaking about it, that right. we're doing it in kind of collaboration with right. them. Right, and, and that's kind of what I, I told her on a, you know, as not speaking for the commission, because I didn't want this to be, but I. Okay, I, let's stop talking about this yeah. now, because we have to end the meeting. I will forward it to you. Okay. Right. And at least, so at least if, you quickly bring up your new business. Yeah. Karen, did you have something to yeah. New business? I thought you said new. Um, so I, hand, I gave you another document. Um, there's been a bunch of questions about how um, a city commission is where, and or committee is run. And um, so I had a conversation with the mayor and um, he pointed me to the code, the administrative code that really lays out everything that we need to know about how this uh, commission should be run. And I know from being an observer here until I was appointed as the liaison that many of these things actually have not been kind of observed, so we have to tighten things up. One of the things that I think is um, really important is that at the beginning of every fiscal year, when the commission convenes a new, um, it begins July 1st, you have to have an annual election of a chair and a vice chair. That hasn't been done in literally years. Part of the reason it didn't get done this year, this past year, is because there was so much kind of tumult and you know people were rotating off and resigning and people were being reappointed. But um, what the mayor said to me is, we absolutely have to have an election of a, a chair and a co-chair as soon as possible. So I want to make sure that we have it in the minutes for our next meeting um, that we do that. That we put on the agenda, you mean, for the next that meeting? It's on the agenda for the next meeting. And we need to have it on record that we um, discussed it today and that it goes on to the agenda for the next meeting. And that would be the January meeting? Well, that would be the December, December. 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 Okay. So we already have a very full <laughs> agenda for that extra meeting. But anyway, if, um, if you want to understand that particular piece um, under multiple member body organization 1.009 is the mm -hmm. particular clause that just kind of lays out that expectation and the need to do that so that we're in um, conformity with other committees and commissions. So in that case, we would have one now and one again in July, just to yeah. make sure that that's understood. Yeah. Mm. Okay. yeah. Um, other than that, though, I know that there's been uh, probably for a year now, this commission has talked about creating its own policies and rules beyond the code, and that hasn't happened. And I would just like to put in a plug for us figuring out when to hunker down and do that, because I think that's important as well. Anyway. Yes, Chris. I have two very fast pieces of new business. Mm -hmm. Uh, one is I want to just share it with everybody here that uh, I happened upon it. I don't know how. Uh, Amnesty International does a free online class understanding what it's like to be a refugee in the world. And I just started to I signed up, and it's about a year to do it. So I'll, I'll let it's you know. It's on the refugee page, the Facebook page. Yeah. And uh, the other question, this is a question. I was approached by someone who was interested in being on this Human Rights Commission who said that she made three calls to the mayor's office and was never, no calls were ever returned. And I wonder if we know what the status is of how people are being uh, folded into this uh, commission and if there are any new members so that we can get up to our full complement of nine. Well, they have, calls are not the way to do it. The way you do it is apply on, online. Okay. And I mean, just fill out the application online. Okay. So, do we know what the status is if we have new members coming on board or anything like that? Would we know? To be Miller is. To be Miller is. Eight out of nine. So and eight they eight. have several applications that they're currently considering. So, if that person's interested, they should get their application okay. in ASAP. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, I guess um, I would say people need to think about if they want to. Uh, consider being chair. We have to deal with that now. And, and vice chair. chair. There should be vice chair. I mean, I think it's good to have vice chair. It's actually in the rule after um, it's required. I talked to the mayor. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was optional. She'll annually elect from its membership a chair, vice chair, and clerk 
and such other officer or officers as are deemed necessary. Okay, well, it seems like those three are important. So. I am on one commission where the clerk role, I mean, basically the minute taker kind of rotates and we could make that decision to do that, I think, and still be in compliance with us. Okay, anything else? All right, how about anybody, somebody want to, 